Okay, so let's try this one. I want to have, have you set up a microphone at the end of a steel rail, all right? So let's see what that looks like. So I've got a rail here. And at the end, I have a microphone. Okay. And, um, and then I want you to strike the rail at the far end um, with a hammer. Right, and a hammer uh, comes down, hits it way over here. All right. Bang, 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 bang. Right, and it hits at the far end, which is 10 meters away from the microphone. All right. Um, and when, when the hammer hits here, the sound is going to travel in two different paths, right? One is going to go through the air here, the one that you hear, right? That's going to go at the speed of sound um, in air. So let's call that VA, not S. For air, but there'll also be a sound wave that propagates through the iron here. So that that let's call VI. All right. And so what I want to know is what is the delay? What, what is the difference between the time that hap, time that this trace gets here and that trace gets here? All right. So that's the, the delay between the two between the two um, sounds, the two pickups on the microphone. All right. So let's see. Let's identify what we have. All right. We have an iron rail. Has some length. That length L is equal to ten meters. I said. All right. Um, let's see, what else do I have? Um, I also need a speed of sound in this railing. Uh, and that will be VI, which in iron is 5,950 meters per second. All right, that, the speed of sound is constant in the medium. So this medium has one speed of sound. This is a different medium, the air. So it has a different speed of sound. Um, and then you have air, which has, like I just said, has that speed of sound. Um, VA. And I'm going to use 340 meters per second because I don't want that three. Um, so I think that'll be perfectly good. Uh, let's see, what do we want to do? We want to find something. We want to find the delay between pickups. Okay, and the delay would be a difference in time. All right. Um, and how do we solve this? Really, I mean, how do we solve this? Well, well, we're going to use kinematics, right? I mean, we just use kinematics. We, we have a speed, um, you know, it goes from here to here and some amount of time. So we have a distance, we have a speed, we want to find the time. Kinematics, right? That's all we need. Um, so even though um, this is in the speed of sound um, chapter or section, um, I'd probably just call this kinematics I use um, the whole delta x equals vt, um, or maybe v delta t. No, we, we want to use vt uh, because we, we're using d, t for something else. So that's all you really need to say for the concept and the equation. It's something simple like that. You don't have to get com complicated. You don't have to be profound. Um, it's just something simple. Okay, something simple. All right, so then we need an answer. All right. Um, so what should we use here? Okay, so one, well, we've got two different media. So let's just find the time in each media. So the time in the um, railing 
is um, Ti is equal to L over Vi, right? Which is 10 meters over 5,950 meters per second. I wrote that down there. I got that from a table. Um, and of course we can cancel those guys out. So we have one over 595 um, seconds. Really don't know what that that means, um, but if you do, if you go ahead and put that in your calculator, you get 1.68 milliseconds. Very fast. And that's about right, right? Um, that's 1 over 1,000 would be 1 millisecond, 1 over 500 would be 2, somewhere in between. Eh, that's pretty good. All right, then we need to know the time in the air. How long does it take to propagate? How long does the sound take to propagate in the air? Uh, it's exactly the same thing, only um, with a different value for the velocity, a slower a slower speed of sound. So that's 1 34th of a second, uh, which is 29.4 milliseconds, as far as I can tell. Okay, uh, what do I want to do here? I want to take the difference. That's our delta T, right? Um, so let's see, that is, I is, okay, so A takes longer, so it would be TA minus TI. This should probably be a um, positive number. Um, we can do this any way we want, but I like to do it this way, where I go ahead and substitute in these, these quantities, and I do a little bit of algebra, because everybody loves algebra. And if you do, do all the algebra out and you end up with a similar problem later, you already know what the, what the answer is up to the point where you start putting numbers in. Um, and it can give you interesting things here, like um, the difference in the time is equal to the difference in the um, velocities uh, divided by the square of the um, geometric mean of the velocities times the length. Pretty simple. Um, but of course, at that point, you have to go through and put in all the numbers. Um, which is 5950 meters per second minus 340 meters per second over 5950 meters per second times 340 meters per second times 10 meters and all that other stuff um, where you end up with something like 27.7 milliseconds as that time. Nice and simple. Uh, doesn't make sense. Um, well, uh, now we s we could say that because uh, Ti is um, or Vi, let's say, is so much larger than Va. It's an order of magnitude larger, right? So um, the fact that delta T is approximately equal to um, TA, I mean, it's, on, it's only difference, different by about 10%, right? Um, it's not an error, it's a difference. So that's a reasonable um, thing. This should be much, this time should be very, very close to this time because this is just shaving off a tiny, a tiny bit of that. So there you go. Simple, um, direct, to the point. That's what these sorts of problems are. Talk to you later.